I used to be a baker like you until I took an arrow in the knee. Who is that? I thought I heard something. Hi, hello, and welcome to the Big Friendly Grub. I hope you are well, and yes, in case you haven't guessed from that rather quirky intro there and my beautiful hat that I am wearing today, we are doing another video game grub. And this is the second video game grub ever. We did one a few weeks ago where we made the apple pie from What Remains of Edith Finch. But in case you haven't guessed from my beautiful hat and the references I have already made, we are going to be making food from Skyrim this week. Skyrim is a fantastic, RPG. It was released in 2011 and it was part of the hugely popular Elder Scrolls series. It's Elder Scrolls 5, I think it is. Is it Elder Scrolls 5? Yeah, Elder Scrolls 5 Skyrim, basically, is its full title. And it is, if you have not been living under the proverbial video game rock for the last eight years or so, it's a huge open world RPG and you play basically a mysterious stranger. You can create your character however you feel. You can be a man, you can be a woman, you can be anything in between. You can be a, a human, a lizard, a cat. Yes, really, you can be those things too. And you basically create your character and you start off the game and it's not going very well for you really because you are being hauled off in a cart by the Imperials to be taken prisoner and have your head chopped off basically. You are to be executed and your day is just generally not going very well. But as your day is about to get even worse and you're about to be given a very short haircut by the executioner, a dragon turns up and basically starts wrecking your shit up. And in the ensuing chaos, you manage to escape and you discover that you are something called the Dragonborn, which basically means you can steal the souls and powers from dragons and you become a huge badass, basically. So that's a brief overview of Skyrim. And it's not only a great game in its own right, it's got hugely memorable moments, hugely memeable moments, like the whole arrow to the knee thing I referenced earlier. I used to be an adventurer like you, and I took an arrow in the knee. But not only is it so memeable, and not just a game where you can foos Rodar people off the top of mountains. Foos Rodar! It's also got a hugely rich backstory to it. There's books and things everywhere. We can read all the lore. And there's also loads and loads of unique food to the game as well. And obviously that's what I'm picking up for, for this video game grub. And I am going to be making from Skyrim, sweet rolls. If you have played Skyrim, you probably had a guard come up to you and go, let me guess, someone stole your sweet roll. And you're like, no mate, I'm off fighting dragons. Don't have time to worry about sweet rolls. But I am going to be making sweet rolls today. And it just so happens I managed to get my hands on, where is it, over here? This Elder Scrolls cookbook. So I have found the recipe for sweet rolls in this. See, there we go, right here, sweet rolls. And there is a sweet roll itself. And this is what we're going to be making. We've got a recipe here, which I will follow. But I'm also going to make a few additions to it because there's a few things that I think could go really well in this. I'm really looking forward to making these. These are kind of like an iconic food in Skyrim and I've always had this vision in my head of how they would look in real life because in the game they look enormous they look absolutely massive now we probably won't be making them that big in real life but I'm still looking forward to giving these a go so I have talked enough I'm sure you agree I have talked enough so let us get started with making sweet rolls from Skyrim take this thing off now oh dear let's get started Right, if we open up our Elder Scrolls cookbook, which is written by a lady called Chelsea Munro Cell, I will put a link down in the description to the book on Amazon, which is where I got it from, because it's a really good cookbook and there's actually loads of really good recipes in here. We are interested in sweet rolls today, so let's open it up to there. And there's a sweet roll again. It says here to, first of all, preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit which I've already done, which is 180 degrees C over here. Over here being England, in case you haven't tweaked that from all my other videos or my accent so far. And then we need a, just a quick rundown of the ingredients. So in this we have unsalted butter, milk, honey, salt, egg, yeast, flour. That's for the actual rolls. There's not too much stuff there at all. And then we need boiled the frosting, cream cheese, unsalted butter, 
powdered sugar, icing sugar over here, and heavy cream or double cream as we would call it. Now I'm also going to chuck a few spices in here. In my head these have always been like a spiced roll type thing. So honey's in them, that's great because that's always how I pictured they would be sweetened. There's also yeast in there which I really like because Skyrim is basically like a medieval style video game. They wouldn't have had things like baking powder or bicarbonate of soda or anything like that. So the fact that these are made with yeast makes real sense to me and I like that touch. So I'm really glad those are in there. But I am going to add some additional spices like cinnamon, ginger and probably nutmeg as well. Just to kind of lift this and give it a little bit more flavour. So let's give these a go, let's get started. So the first thing we've been asked to do is combine the butter, warm milk and honey, stirring until the honey has dissolved. So first things first, warm milk. There is a cup's worth of milk here, which is roughly 240 millilitres. Then there are three tablespoons of melted unsalted butter here, which is about 45 grams worth, roughly. Then I need two tablespoons of good honey, and I am going to just roughly eyeball this. So I'm going to say that's like one tablespoon, and that is like two tablespoons, I think. Then I'm going to, just going to combine this together with a wooden spoon, because I don't think they had electric whisks or anything like that in Skyrim. They had magic, but they didn't have electric whisks or anything like that. So let's combine this together until this honey has dissolved, which may take a little while. Now it says to add in the salt and the yeast at this stage, which is a strange stage to add it in at, but let's roll with it. So that adds in a pinch of salt, I'm going to add it over this side. Then we need two teaspoons of dry yeast, so I'm going to add it over this side because if you mix salt and yeast directly together you can kill your yeast and we don't want to do that. I'm going to quickly combine this in now. Let's mix this all together. There's something I just really like the smell of yeast mixed with warm milk. I don't know what it is, it's just that that's what baking smells like to me, yeast. Fantastic smell. They should bottle it and sell it as aftershave or not. I mean if that's not your bag then fine. I would probably wear it though. I'd love to go around smelling like yeast. Okay, maybe I'll retract that statement. No, maybe not. <laughs> then next we have to add in our egg and also our flour. It says here two cups of all-purpose flour, which works out roughly, I think, 480 grams of flour. So let's chuck that in as well. And then mix completely until you have a smooth batter. I'm going to have to get the old elbow grease out for this as I'm doing it by hand. So leave me to it and you can join me when I have sped up time. Kind of like magic. What? La cast! Right, I've been mixing and it is now smooth, but it's also really, really thick. This is, to me, this is not a batter. This is more like a dough. It's really, really thick. So what I am now going to do is just add in a bit more milk until I think this is more of a batter than a dough. It's not far off, but to me, this is going to be a bit too thick because we're going to need to get this into some mini bunt moulds and I don't think this will quite get in that comfortably. So just adding a little bit more in to the batter or what will hopefully become a batter. Won't need much. It won't take too much to thin this out. But to me, at the moment, this is still a bit too thick. I could be making this go horribly, horribly wrong, but I'm just going with my instincts here. In my haste, I nearly forgot a step. I nearly forgot my additional step. I was gonna add some spices to this and I've nearly forgotten. So I am gonna do this right now as I'm adding in some more milk. It's nearly there. I just need to add in some more milk to help get these spices in now. So I'm gonna add in half a teaspoon of ground ginger, a teaspoon's worth of cinnamon, about a quarter of a teaspoon's worth of nutmeg, and then a teaspoon's worth of ground mixed spice. Now this would have been much better to do when I was putting the flour in, but in my haste I forgot. But we've remembered and let's get this in. And I think this spice is just really gonna lift this even more. And I'm just gonna add in a drop of milk just to help mix these spices in. Right, I've now got this all mixed together. It seems a lot smoother, closer to a batter than a dough now. It's probably somewhere in between. I think this is better for me just because I think this will get into our molds a lot better. It was feeling too thick earlier and I wasn't sure it would actually get into our molds. So, I think I'm gonna go with this. I could be completely wrong. It could have been completely accurate what I was doing, but I'm just trying to go with my instincts here. So I'm gonna now need to get this into our mold. So this spoon evenly into four five inch miniature bunt pans, but I don't have four five inch miniature bunt pans. So I'm gonna to have to make do with these six three inch miniature bunt molds. 
and hope they work. So to make sure that these are actually non-stick, it's silicon so it should be, but I'm going to not take any chances. I'm going to spray these with a little bit of oil and just work that into all the edges. Then I need to try and spoon our mixture into these moulds. So this is going to be interesting. It's going to be sticky and messy and I don't know how well this is going to go. And it's not too bad. I think any thicker than this would have had problems. I think we're going to get much more than six out of this. These are not big moulds, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'll just do the first one. You don't need to watch me on these next... I was about to say three, six, five. Ah, I can't count. Right, I've got my batter slash dough into the mould. It wasn't too bad, I had to give it some corrosion by wetting my fingers and help flattening it down. But it's in there, so now I need to apparently give it 30 minutes to rise. So I'm gonna cover this with a clean tea towel and pop this over to one side while it rises. Um, shouldn't need too long, because it's gonna fill out hopefully those bump moulds and hopefully get into all those edges and uh, while we're doing that, we can be making the frosting for it. Right, while our sweet rolls rise like the power of the dragonborn within us, we will now make our frosting, which to me very much looks like a cinnamon roll frosting. So we should be quite familiar with this because we made that huge cinnamon roll a good month or so ago. Maybe even longer than that now. Time flies when you are having fun. So we need to add in a tablespoon's worth of softened butter. That works out to roughly 15 grams. It's not a lot, but these sweet rolls aren't gonna be very big. Then we need two tablespoons of cream cheese, which is about 30 grams. So let me use my tablespoon measure. Get off of there. Then I need a half a cup of powdered sugar or icing sugar in our case. And that works out to about 120 grams. So in this goes, I hate this stuff. It just gets everywhere. And it says, cream together, cream cheese, butter, and powdered sugar in a small bowl. So I will try and do that now without hopefully making too much of a mess. Oh, geez. too late. Right, that's all creamed together. Now it says, gradually add just enough heavy cream to get a smooth, thick icing that barely runs off a spoon. So I'm just gonna add in a drizzle here. Just mix this together. Don't think we'll need too much. It just says barely runs off a spoon. So I think, yeah, I'd say, yeah, that barely runs off a spoon to me. So I think that's good. I think that will do us for our sweet rolls. It's not a lot, but they're not very big or they won't be very big when they're baked. Hopefully they come out well. So I'm gonna pop this to one side and then we will be getting our sweet rolls into the oven next or in about 15 minutes. Okay, our sweet rolls have had a good 30 minutes rising. I think that's a good amount because these are starting to come up and over. So I don't want them to rise up too more because obviously they're gonna rise more in the, I was about to say in the fridge, in the oven. They wouldn't cook very well in the fridge now, would they? So let's get these into the oven, 180 degrees for, it says, 15 minutes. But because these are slightly smaller than the size that it suggests in the book, I am going to probably check them after about eight minutes and see how they're doing because I don't want them to explode up and over. So I'm going to keep a good eye on these. So let's get these into the oven. Right, these have now had the full 15 minutes. And, oh, okay, okay. They're not too bad. These were rising up a fair bit halfway through, but there wasn't really much I could do about it, to be honest. I couldn't stop them from rising and they needed to get further. There is some cracking here. This could just be from where they have been exploding out. So these now need to have about five minutes to cool down in the silicon mold. And then this is where we try and attempt to turn them out of the bump mold. We'll have to see how these turned out. Yeah, I think once these have cooled, that will help. So yeah, let's give these some time to cool down and then try and get them out of the mold. Right, these have had five minutes. So I'm just gonna go straight in here and try and get these out. So I'm gonna pop these onto this cooling rack and then I'm going to try and very carefully turn these over onto it. Oh, this is feeling precarious. Oh, and I'm going to just hopefully just lift this off. He says hopefully. Oh, okay, okay. Nearly there. Ah, well those don't look too bad. It's always a sign of quality when you can say something doesn't look too bad, but they do not look too bad. What I would actually be tempted to do and I might actually do is pop those back into the oven for a few minutes just to give them a bit more color on here because 
they look all right. They look good. They look kind of like a sweet roll. Wow. Okay, I think I am going to do that. I'm going to pop these back into the oven for about two to three minutes, not long, just enough to give them a bit of colour. I like the look of those. I just think they need a bit of colour on them. So let's do that now. Let's get this tray, pop them on there like that. I'm completely going off the recipe now. Chelsea must be absolutely fuming at me, but let's give it a go. Let's get these in the oven for three more minutes. There we go. Those three minutes in the oven have just given a little bit of browning on the edges. So that looks better to me. I think that will work. I don't want to give them too long because obviously I don't want to over bake them. So let's get these back on here. And now they just need to cool completely so I can get the cheese, cheese cream, cheese cream, cream cheese icing onto them. So we're gonna have to wait a little while, I'm afraid. But in that time, I've got some batter, dough, whatever it's called, left over. So I might see if I can get a few more out of these. Right, so as you can probably see now, we have twice as many switch rolls. I did another batch while the others were cooling and these have had time to cool now. So we are now ready to get these iced, frosted, whatever you want to call it, wherever you're from, let's get some stuff on these things. So we just need to add some of our icing from earlier onto the top of these. And we won't need a lot, it's just getting this to look like that signature sweet roll style. So I'm gonna drizzle some over the top of each one of these. So it kind of like almost drizzles down the side a bit. And I just need to repeat this another 11 times. Hopefully I've got enough stuff here. Obviously this recipe has been a bit of an adaptation of the original because of the different size of sweet rolls we've got and everything else I've done really. I have gone a bit off piste, but that's fine. Let's give these a go. I can always make some more icing as we go along. So I'm gonna do all of these and see how we get on. Okay, that did take a bit longer than I anticipated. I did have to go off and make some more icing because there wasn't quite enough to get all over the top of these. So I would suggest if you are making the icing, and um, probably double the amount of what's in the recipe. That's pretty much what I did here. I had a little bit left over, but easier just to double it and you should have plenty for your sweet rolls. Again, this is probably because I've been a little bit lax and loose with the recipe and also got different size molds and things like that but this is what has worked today for me. There's nothing else left to do, but get some shots of these and then I can go off and try one because I'm really intrigued about these. I really don't know how they're gonna be. Taste-wise, I think I've got an idea. Texture-wise, I don't know. I'm really curious. So let's not wait around too much longer. Let's go off and try and give these a go. Right, we have made our sweet rolls and there is nothing else left to do except Wait, hang on, I should change for this. There we go, that's much better. You can't try a sweet roll unless we're dressed properly for the occasion. So these were an interesting experience. Um, I had to, well, I say I had to, I chose to end up um, tweaking the recipe as I went along just because I went with my gut. Because I didn't really know how they were supposed to be texture-wise or how they were supposed to like feel as well, it was very difficult to tell whether how the batter should be or anything like that. Um, it said batter in the book. So when I initially made it, it seemed more like a dough and that seemed too thick to me. And I don't think we would have got that into our molds. Hence why I thinned it out and I had some spices and I just ended up going completely off piece to be honest. But they look all right. They look better than I thought they would when I was making them dough, um, batter, whatever. But they look good, they smell good. I'd just be really interested to see what they're like. So I'm gonna try one of these right now. Let's go for this one. I have preconceptions about these because obviously I've seen them in the game and things like that, but this might completely shatter all those preconceptions because I can only ever base it on a video game. But let's give it a go because that's the only way you can see what these are like. Um, I haven't got my glasses on, so I'll probably end up getting this all over my face. Hmm. Hmm. I have, I've got cream cheese all over my face. Hmm. Hmm. That's good. I mean, you get a lot of the cream cheese icing, which to be fair, is to be expected because it ends up filling up inside here. You've got that little hole in the top. So you get a lot of the cream cheese filling in it. It's nice, they are nice. They are more like cinnamon rolls or that kind of texture, which to be honest, when I was playing the game is not kind of how I pictured them to be. I pictured them to be a bit more cakey and bready. But I suppose that makes sense because they are a sweet roll and rolls are usually 
a bit more ready, a bit more dough. So that makes sense. And they are nice, I like those. Those will be very, very nice with a cup of coffee, which sounds like a fantastic idea actually. I think I'm going to go off and enjoy a coffee now because I've done my bit for the day. I am very aware that I've still got cream cheese icing all over my face and I'm now standing here in a latex helmet looking like a bit of a helmet if I'm honest. So yeah, I'm gonna go clean up, um, go pour myself a coffee and have a nice enjoyable sweet roll from Skyrim. But I think that's it for this big friendly grub. I need to go and clean up, I need to go take this thing off and I need to go and finish this off and enjoy a coffee. So I will see you guys very, very soon. You know all the usual drill, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this and let me know if there's any other video game food you want me to do. Um, just comment down below or hit me up on Twitter or on Instagram or even on Facebook because I'm on there as well. And yeah, let me know if you enjoyed this and if there's anything you would have done differently or if you give these a go, let me know how they turned out. But otherwise, I will see you on the very next Big Friendly Grub. Take care. Bye.